OK, you're looking forward to Cropperty? Oh, it's going to be great. I mean, we're big fans of Fairport anyway. We're really looking forward to the festival because you know, it has such a great reputation as being a friendly festival. There's loads and loads of people that we want to see. I mean, I can't believe we're on the same... Bill, you know, Buzzcocks are playing, Thompson's playing, obviously Fairport. You know, it's, it's, we're really, really looking forward to it. And in a way, well, we're in a train station, in a way, the whole point about this music is it's meant to be played in company with, you know, with a crowd, with people enjoying it. It's, it's, it's meant to be live music as opposed to recorded music. So, uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to it. And, you know, I've grown up being interested in Jelly Roll, Norton and Washboard Sam and that kind of thing. We've met the rest of the guys from the band and we all sort of shared this love of old, what we consider to be authentic music. So we just said, right, let's form a skiffle band. And so we did, and we are all from the Southampton area, so we started playing around in Southampton. And actually, we, our, our impression was that it would be a... You know, we play to a pub load of one guy with a pewter tankard and a beard. And actually, for a while, we did do that. <laughs> and then uh, suddenly, the way right now, here we are playing in glamorous Mal Maribona <laughs> railway station. So, really, I think the world is now our oyster, thanks to Skiffle. I'm at the station, and I ain't never come back. She's waiting for me, and keeps me up all night. since I was a kid. Uh, I was always in skiffle bands. Uh, there's something about the fact that it's kind of, it's what punk rock sounded like when it first started out. Is the idea was, it comes from American junk band music, it's the idea of people making a really big rack with really little resources. But, but, I mean, the thing with skiffle is, it, it, because it has its roots in jug band music, which is people playing very, very sort of early instrumentation, it requires a very good sense of rhythm, good sense of tune, and songs which are fairly indestructible. The way that we started was we essentially learned about a hundred classic American songs before we started writing our own material. Because you learn how it is that people wrote what I think of as you know great blues songs, great pop songs, great rock songs. They all come from essentially that same songbook. So we we spent six or seven years just doing that and then we started writing our own material. This company is, I mean, I, you know, I have great respect for jazz musicians and all the rest of it. If it's a bass, play the bass, you know, I mean, uh, I hate to say this, but if you're, play, you're holding a bass, play an A, play a D, occasionally play the root note of the chord, you know, it won't kill you. Actually, here's my, my ambition with jazz basses. I've been beating that double bass up for a long time, and I get people that really go, is that really any way to treat a musical instrument? But the answer is no, but it's not a musical instrument. It's just a, that's just a souped-up version of a, of a T-chess bass. And my ambition is to go around jazz clubs, getting jazz basses and handcuffing their left hand to the headstock of the bass, so they can't play anything other than the root notes. <laughs> We play songs about transport, homicide, and uh, we're playing crop ready.